Hi, I'm Eric Kang, a Senior Program Manager in Data Platforms Group. In this video, I'm going to show you how to develop a SQL Server database for your application using database project in Visual Studio 2017. Then, I'll show you how to automate database CI CD using Visual Studio Team Service. Please note that this video is an introductory session for application developers. In this session, we will quickly go over the concept of database CI CD, then walk through database development with a database project in Visual Studio, then walk through CI and CD automation using VSTS. As an application developer, you may have seen this diagram before. This is a common practice for CI and CD for application development. Your application source code is managed in a source control like a GitHub or VSTS. You can build a source code to produce an artifact, test, then deploy and monitor. You repeat the cycle by developing a new feature or by fixing a bug. Can we apply the same practice to a database development? The short answer is yes. If you build an app and database using SQL Server, Visual Studio, and VSTS. Let me show you three flavors of doing so. First, ORM, Object Relational Mapping. It is very popular for application plus database development. It's easy to bootstrap with a low learning curve for app developers. Migration-based database development is more or less a traditional way of developing a database using T-SQL with a create, alter, and drop statements in general, and directly modify the live database. State-based is another flavor that allows you to uh, develop a database in a very similar way that uh, you develop an application, while helping you experience T-SQL language, which is the language uh, to develop and manage a SQL Server database running anywhere in Azure SQL DB. In this session, we'll walk through the state-based database development. Let's start the, the demo. All right, in this demo, uh, let's build a small database together. Because we are going to start a project in VSTS, first step is to go to uh, uh, your VSTS account and create a new project. I called it Connect 2017 because this is our uh, session in Connect 2017. So this is the, uh, the page after you create a, a new project, and uh, that's it. And then go to Visual Studio, go to Team Explorer, uh, make connection to that the Visual Studio Team Service, and clone it. That's uh, where we start. OK, let's start a new project. So under the solutions, click New. And it will bring up under uh, other languages and SQL Server, uh, there are two project templates. One is the SQL Server uh, database project, which is a state-based. And the ReadyRoll uh, SQL Server database project is another great tool that you can uh, use to build your database using uh, the migration-based approach. So in this demo, uh, let's select the SQL Server database project and name it DemoDB. OK, that's good. And you go and OK it. All right. After you've done that, go to Solution Explorer. Then you will see new database project is created with empty. If you go to uh, View and the SQL Server Object Explorer, then you can see there is a Projects folder. This is not your real database. This is uh, showing your project content as if it is a database. So it is very handy. By ex expanding it, you can see all the object types as a folder. So let's add a new table. So right click and click Add New Table. All right, let's name it as a My Table. And add it. It opens up a table designer, and you can easily type in the column name and types. So let's add the email, and let's make the type as uh, n bar char 50. And we are going to have a first name, same thing, and last name.
Great. So we can save it. If you go to Solution Explorer again, as you create a new table, then uh, the SSDT adds a source code file into that the solution folder. You can also see the um, uh, this create table as a code in the code editor view as well. Okay, let's add one more item, which is let's add a view. So go to uh, add view, add a new view menu, and click it, and let's name it as my view. All right, and type in my table. Okay, as you see, SSDT comes with the IntelliSense, so you can easily finish your uh, selected statement through the help of IntelliSense. So let's select email, first name, last name. All right, so this is our small database project. After you add a couple objects, next, next step is that you go to uh, the project, Solution Explorer, and build it. Within a few seconds, the build is completed, and the, what you have is the, um, the DAC pack which captures the model of your database in a, a model uh, format. Okay, once you have done that, now it is time to publish. So go to a project and click publish. So in that case, it opens up a publish database dialog. You select your SQL Server database. I have one uh, running in the, my local uh, machine. So I select a master and I will name it as a demo DB. And just to create a profile so that you don't have to repeat the same thing multiple times. So just to do create profile. Okay, now as you see, demo db.publish.xml is created. So next time when we publish again, we can just use the same thing. Okay, let's click publish. All right, it's done. And uh, let's take a look at what has happened. We just added uh, two objects. So the action that was happened is create table and view. As a CDT provides, automatically generated script that can be used actually to deploy those objects into the uh, target database, which was a demo DB. So as you've seen, these are all the scripts that you need to create a database and um, uh, create a two tables. So this, this is the beauty of using state-based. What you develop is basically what you uh, desire to have in your database. And SSDT automatically converts into a, a physical language that uh, uh, can be deployed to your target database. All right, so let's go to our Object Explorer. And uh, this is the other server that I'm running on my laptop. And refresh it. All right, as you see, the demo DB is created with a tab my table and view. All right, the next step is that after a while, we realized that uh, we need to modify our database table. So one change that I'd like to do is that if you go here and instead of a my table, I wanted to uh, call it as employee. So if I go to the, uh, the object again, and if I change it to um, employee, let's see what happens. All right, I save it. Then if you go to add a list, suddenly you have a seven errors uh, occurred. Why? Because this table is referenced by the view. And just to changing the, uh, uh, the table name will break all this select statement and the code in your view. SSDT analyze this type of a change and errors in the real time and reports you there is an error. So the correct way of doing it is, I will do it again. So let's open our view and revert it back, which was my table, right? And here, instead of directly modifying it, 
right click and click the refactor menu and there is a rename. There are many other cases that you want to use the refactor, but simply rename is the one of the case. So let's make it as employ using refactor tool and OK it. Then now, SSTT reports you that the, all the necessary changes because of the simple uh, name change on the table. And by applying it, not only for the table, it also changes necessary objects along with it. So if I go to my view, uh, source code, then there is employee, which is automatically changed by SSDT. Great. So this is our database that we want to use for our project. So let's do it one more time. Go and build the Solution Explorer in the project template. That is already done. And then publish. Oh, we already created our publish profile. So instead of uh, uh, opening the publish menu, we can just uh, go to publish profile, double click it, and publish it. So this is what we call state-based. Instead of uh, using alter statement or drop statement for the changes, you just uh, keep changing uh, the, the table as if it is a class and you're modifying the, uh, uh, the source code in your application by adding functions or uh, more properties instead of uh, uh, using any uh, uh, the alter, like a drop, like a statement. So that is a, a, uh, the beauty of SSDT and SSDT based database development provides you and the database development is more like uh, application development using this way. All right, so now we have changes. So let's check in the changes into our project in VSTS. So uh, we'll mark it as initial changes and click commit all and push. All right, so it is all done. Either we can create a pull request and or we can just directly check into master. This time, I just directly check in into master. Let's go to our project. So go to home of a team explorer and click your URL of your team service project. All right. So if you go to code, now you can see all the codes are checked in. So it is time to enable CI build and continuous deployment. Here, what we are going to do is that we are going to build and we are going to deploy the changes to Azure SQL database. I have Eric Kang server on my Azure account, which has no database. Okay, let's try that one, one by one. So first, we need to define a new build definition. So go to build and release tab, click builds. All right, and click new definition. Just to start with the empty process, and then you will start with a template, uh, which is provided by VSTS. The first step is that in the agent queue, select hosted VS uh, 2017. Okay, and this one defines where it, where we are going to pull the uh, the source code, which is our VSTS project. So it is a little set as a default. Okay, to build, automate the CI build. Just to click the plus button and add the task of MS build. Okay, here we go. Just add it. Okay, and then we just select our project, which is DemoDB and the DemoDB solution, which is what uh, we just created. And that's it. Okay, and you need the two more steps to re add it. One is a copy artifact here, and then publish it. For any project for SSDT and database project, it's all, always the same. So you can just remember, just to add a build, copy files, the source folder. 
just use agent build a directory and type in backslash s. This is the, uh, the location of a uh, backpack will be created. And target folder, just to copy the example in the help. That's all you need. And publish artifact, same thing. Just copy the sample. And let, let's name it as demo db as an artifact name. That's it. So let's save and queue. All right, so new build is started. If you go there, there will be a, a hosted agent is in the queue. And within a few seconds, it will start. All right, so now it is started. All right, let's hold on. So now we have set up the CI build automation. It is so simple, just the three task definitions. You can fully automate your database CI build. Okay, now let's take a look at how you can continuously deploy the database changes. So you go to build and release tab and click releases. and click new definition. So here, start with empty process and go to uh, artifact and click plus add. We already have a build, so we can just select the connect 2017 CI build that we just created. Okay, that's it. So we add it. Next step is setting the target environment, which is a SQL Server instance. In our case, it's Azure SQL uh, Server. So the artifact that is built through the build definition will be deployed to the target environment. To do, to do that, uh, go to uh, environment and click the face definition there. Okay, and click plus and select database. So there is Azure SQL database deployment. This one works very well for Azure SQL database deployment, but it can also work for any uh, on-prem database uh, deployment as well. Because it's under the hood, it's using SQL package.exe, which is the command line tool for deploying database. Okay, so add that step, and you just click, select, Azure con connection type is Azure Resource Manager, and you select your subscription. Okay, I'm going to select one of my subscription there. And the server name was Eric Kang server dot the database dot windows net. And database name demo db. Okay, here, this is important, the server admin login and password, we have to specify a variable so that the, it's a secure in the build definition, uh, release definition, instead of storing it as a uh, clear text. So let's name it as SQL user and SQL password. To define this one, go to variables and click add SQL user and lock the, um, the, the key and type in your username plus add SQL password and your password. All right, that's it. Let's go back to our task. Let me just click this one. And let's, the next step is setting up the backpack file. So by clicking the Chevron, it shows up the previous build that was successfully uh, executed. So you just go and select one. So in this case, it's under bin and debug. 
No worries. The SSTT project always creates a DAC pack in the debug folder. There is no concept of a debug and then the release in this uh, the artifact type. So you can just go to debug and select DAC pack. Okay. Okay. That's great. So that's it. And then you save it. And then press uh, plus release. That will start a new release. Okay, I click the create. Okay, here we go. The new release, release dash one, was started. All right, let's take a look at the logs. Within a few seconds, the release process will start. All right, it's done. So let's check if the database is really created in our server. Okay, here we go. So new database demo DB is created in our Azure SQL Server. That's it. Using Visual Studio database project, you can quickly develop a database, publish it, and check in the code into VSTS. And VSTS can automatically build and publish it into your SQL Server database and Azure SQL Server. All right, in this session, we've learned how to start the database development using database project in Visual Studio and automate it with a VSTS. In channel nine, we have published three database CI CD sessions with more details. Please watch the episodes to learn more. Thank you for watching this video. Enjoy developing SQL Server database using Visual Studio and VSTS and happy coding.